The Errol Sea Story by Joe Schmidt It's easy to think sometimes that water is infinitely available when you're from Michigan. After all, we are surrounded by the Great Lakes. But once you think about just how many things you really use water for, it's not all that hard to imagine that one day it could all go away. You've got basic things you use water for, like brushing your teeth, taking a shower, and doing laundry. But have you considered how much water people use when they do things like wash their cars? Or how much do you think they use when they water their lawn? Or worse, how much water do you think people use when they water an entire farm field? In Michigan, we're lucky. We live in a climate where there's plenty of rainfall to replenish all the water that we use. But it isn't like that everywhere in the world. Take the Aral Sea region, for example. There is so very little rainfall that most of the area is actually a desert. The Aral Sea is located in an arid region of Southwest Asia, between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. At one point, the Aral Sea was actually the fourth largest freshwater source in the entire world. But due to a number of factors, it has mostly vanished, as you can see from the pictures. Why is this happening? For thousands of years, the Aral Sea was fed by two rivers, the Amu and the Sir. These rivers provided the lake with more water than people needed, and more than the sun and the earth could remove. This led to the waters being rich with fish and fresh for plant life. People crowded the shores of the water, and the fishing industry made the people very wealthy. But in the 1960s, the Soviet Union decided that using the water to grow cotton would be a better use for it, and so they built large dams, and they diverted much of the water away to the cotton fields. With little new water feeding the lake, the sun began robbing the lake bed of much of its water through evaporation. There is a little bit of salt in all natural water, so as evaporation occurred, the water disappeared into the sky and all that was left on the ground was salt. As the years passed and the water level shrunk, the water became so salty that most of the plants and the fish died. Worse yet, the fields that were growing the cotton began to get too salty too, and so many of those plants died as well. With the shoreline moving in some places as many as a hundred miles away from cities, ships were left stranded in the desert, people lost their jobs, and all the salt and chemicals left behind on the ground began to swirl in the air, making people very sick. Decades later, people around the world are still working together to try to repair as much of the Aral Sea as possible, but it is very unlikely that it can be fully restored. Life in the Aral Sea region continues to be very hard. Today in the United States, we are seeing water levels of underground aquifers and in our lakes drop. We're also seeing high levels of pollution caused by humans. What steps will we take to prevent another water disaster from happening on our home planet?